Pizza Drivers, Who's on Your No Delivery List? Viewers Edition. All right, I will kick us off by getting ahead of the debate and stating definitively that pineapple does belong on pizza. New York style is superior to deep dish, and anchovies and olives go great together. Seems like dill pickle pizza is on the rise as well, but I think we can all agree no matter the minor differences, pizza in general is one of the best foods there is, with almost universal appeal. So let's hear what pizza delivery stories our viewers had to share. Story 1. Okay, so alternatively, here's a sad pizza story. I used to work at a Domino's, and three times a week, at between 5 to 7 p.m., an older guy, about 50 years old, named Herbert, would order a medium pizza with beef, pepperoni, and extra sauce. It was literally at the point where, at 6.30, the guys would start prepping his pizza, knowing he'd be ordering soon. He was a wealthier guy and would tip well, like $30 kind of well. This went on for years, before I started working there, and even after I left, after having worked there about two and a half years. I kept in contact with the old shop and everyone there. Well, one day, at his usual call time, he didn't call. Seven o'clock came and went, nothing. So the shop manager, who had been working there since Moses parted the Red Sea, decided to send a driver with his usual order. Driver gets there, knocks on the door, nothing. Calls the shop, manager tells her to check it out. She looks through a window to see him slouched in his chair, not moving with the TV on. She called the police to do a wellness check on him. He was not alive. Nobody at my shop knows how, but his obituary read the last thing he was doing was getting ready to call our store to order his usual favorite pizza. R.I.P. Herbert, you are remembered. Oh, dang, that was a sad story. Almost reminds me of Brendan Fraser's character from the movie The Whale. Although his character actually had a much happier ending. And on that note, I promise that is the only sad story in this entire video. So the rest of these will be on a more upbeat note. So with that, on to story number two. Story two, dude got the best driver for Domino's. He travels the world apparently and picks up odd jobs. I knew he was Greek right off the bat because I am as well. So we ordered the pizzas while having a giant slip and slide party in the backyard. He came and saw how much fun we were having and I asked him if he wanted to go down the slip and slide. He did and loved it. We got the best pictures with him and had a great time. We tipped him a hundred bucks and he thanked us for being so nice and making his night. The next weekend we ordered from Domino's with no party and asked for him specifically to deliver our pizza. Apparently the manager said you can't request people due to safety reasons. We understood and still submitted our order. Apparently the manager told him about that and he insisted on delivering. We weren't doing anything crazy but just had fun talking with him about his life travels and also tipped him well. He was the most wholesome guy. Uh, I'd be curious to see the data on how public reviews on social media like Google reviews or Yelp have actually impacted the restaurant industry. Nowadays, I don't really know many people that don't reference the rating of a restaurant before trying it, especially when they're traveling to new places. Prior to this, I guess it was all based on curb appeal of the storefront, plus word of mouth or published reviews in local articles and such. And you just never know if the reviewer was biased or paid off. But now with Google reviews, you can see the most honest feedback and really make an informed decision. Actually, I would think ultimately it's good and only helps fuel the popularity of businesses that really legitimately deserve the praise. The only considerations is that it seems reviewers are more likely to decide to actually post a review in the first place if they've had a bad experience. I mean, really, how often have you been compelled to leave a review because you were pleased versus angry? Story 3. My next order a few weeks later, the guy showed up with the receipt and an order paper with the time handwritten on it where he's claiming we are scamming them because he arrived within 29 minutes of the order. I looked at my phone log from when I hung up with them, and when I called back, it was indeed 45 minutes. He then claimed I forget it despite him having the handwritten timestamp. After briefly arguing, I told him it's time for him to leave the property. He flipped me off and stomped off. 
I went to give them a description of the event on Google Reviews, along with their call center that takes the orders, and found out this isn't their first argument-based review. A lot of missing items. They fight that they delivered, but the customer says it never arrived. I got another credit offer for the incident, but I opted for a refund instead, as I don't have any plans on visiting them again. I guess I blacklisted them if that counts. Story 4. I had just moved into a new place in the same neighborhood I already lived in. I called the local place that I always ordered from, and when they tried to confirm my old address because they recognized the number and me from caller ID, I told them I moved and gave them my new address. They told me they couldn't deliver to my new address because they had chargeback issues or a bounce check, something about them not paying. Now, this isn't an apartment building, it's a townhouse. I explained that I just moved in a week ago and they know me because I order from them all the time. They insisted their system wouldn't let them deliver because the address was blacklisted. Never ordered from them again. Shame too, they had great food. Story 5 She kept talking about how good their pizza was, so I decided to order. I called them up, put in the order, said I'd pay with cash, and waited. Three hours later, the manager, an Indian fellow who didn't have the best English, called me and screeched about how I owed him 200 odd dollars and ranted about how evil I was and I was ripping off good hard-working folks. It occurs to me that the payment might have been cancelled by mistake, so I try to tell him this and that I'll call the bank to sort it out, but he just keeps ranting and raving until I have to hang up on him. Story 6. I got two. At a Burger King, a guy had his friend grab the food and dash while he pretended to look for his wallet. The guy who dashed was double parked in three parking spots and was getting a ticket while the officer's partner was inside behind his friend. Worst timing ever. Second story, guy called in and promised an extra $20 if we delivered his food to him. He was close to a co-worker's house, so he decided to make an extra 20 bucks. He got there and a guy pulled a knife on him wanting everything. Food, car, wallet, etc. My coworker had a 22 pistol and shot him in the leg. Story 7. My grandmother lived in a quiet little elderly part of town and knew the police chief. Went to school with the mayor and was friends with the bank manager. You'd think if the local business had gotten shafted on a payment, somebody would have said something. But nope, no one knew that had happened, and I had to go in and talk with the bank manager to find the payment and prove that it had, in fact, been mistakenly cancelled. It had, and she went over to the pizza shop and paid them in cash with an extra $50 as an apology, and her house was blacklisted. Story 8 I empathize with the store manager for losing the money on a big order, agree that it's a terrible thing, but he made no attempt to rectify the situation and spent a good 20 minutes screaming at me in broken English over the phone while I was trying to first figure out what the issue was, then second apologize for it. The store was a mile and a half from where my grandmother lives and another mile from the local police station. He never mentioned the fraud to anyone or did anything to try and fix it just stewed and screamed at a stranger over the phone. Story 9 Too long didn't read, DoorDash driver backs out on order, causing customer to call repeatedly and ticking off the general manager, earning herself a blacklist. We had to DoorDash this old woman's order because we had no drivers available, and somebody accepted it, but since it was a cash order, they never came, and once they accept an order, it's out of our hands and the lady just refused to accept the fact that we don't know when it would be delivered, so she proceeded to call every five minutes for a delivery update until the general manager got so fed up and voided the order and blacklisted her. Oh, yikes. To me, it sounds like that's very poor business practice. First off, they outsource their delivery to a third party where they can then no longer oversee the operations. So really, the pizza place is totally at fault for the whole incident and the customer not receiving the order. In my opinion, they should have taken full responsibility, fessed up to their mistakes, and offered the customer at least an apology at the minimum. But instead, they decided it was just too much trouble and essentially ghosted the customer, hoping that the problem would just be forgotten and never come back to haunt them. But I imagine if this is how the pizza place runs its business normally, they weren't in business for very long. Story 10. 
always hated going to that one city block with social housing. You know, it's basically a slum. All the poor people and addicts pushed out of the city into a single block on the outskirts behind some factories so as not to bother the rest of the city. Delivery there was a bit tedious, because for one, it was hard to figure out the apartment number, and people would usually be so drunk they had trouble getting to the door and collecting the darn pizza or kebab. Story 11. I wanted to put a crowd of never-tippers on our list, but it was mostly reserved for people who wrote hot checks. We stopped accepting checks, except from people the owner didn't know, and really, really entitled and rude customers. Thankfully, that last group was rare, and it was a small town where robberies of delivery drivers just didn't happen all that often. Anyone likely to do it was probably running much more lucrative and serious crimes in the house and did not want the attention. Story 12. When I was doing food delivery, there was this complex that was on the no delivery list, except for one dude. Everyone else was always confrontational or downright used some coincidental things happened to endanger drivers. Others seemed to just not order, but one dude, he was all right. The fact that he always answered the door in pajamas and a bathrobe raised some eyebrows, but he would pay all right and just let us go on with the day, sometimes even tipping if we got there fast. Story 13. In college, circa 2003, I was in a Dungeons & Dragons group that met on alternating Fridays and consistently ordered from the same Pizza Hut. We must have hit their premium list because suddenly the little stuck-on paper coupons were replaced with these Xeroxed ones for business catering, giving us far better deals than the usual consumer coupons. We were a mess to deliver to, and even order call took forever with multiple methods of payment. But I guess we made it worth their while. Oh yeah, Dungeons and Dragons and pizza goes together like fine wine and cheese. And to me, whenever the two come together, I'm often reminded of Britta Perry's endearing little jingle. Pizza, pizza in my tummy, me so hungry, me so hungry. <laughs> I might have a little crush on her as well. But uh, Pizza Hut, mm, yeah, I would pass. Too much risk of inducing diarrhea. Story 14. I have a pizza place nearby and those guys like me. I call early for my food so they have over two hours to prepare it. They're faster to me than they told me in the beginning how long it would take, and they give me the occasional discount. I mostly only order for myself, and my bill is always under 35 euros, without discount. Perks for being a stoner guy, I guess. By the way, I only order like once a month. Story 15. I don't recall any such list when I was delivering in the 80s, but both of my kids work at a pizza place, as drivers, and they do have such a list, and there are more than a couple reasons people can end up on it. Customers who never come to the door or don't answer their phone, customers who lie about pizzas being botched, customers who are extremely rude and who don't tip well enough to compensate for their rudeness. Story 16. Drug reps are salesmen for pharmaceutical companies. You know all those free samples your doctor or dentist gives you? That's where they come from. The nicer reps drop by on an appointment with samples and information pamphlets for the doctors and patients. The pushy ones drop in unannounced, demand to meet with the doctor, and try to talk them into prescribing more of their medications. This is more of a U.S. thing. Elsewhere, pharmaceutical sales are more strictly regulated. Story 17 I ordered a pizza, and my girlfriend changed her mind after I hung up, so I called them back and said we wanted a different topping. They said, sorry, they were a call center, and the order had already been sent off to my nearest store. I said, okay. My girlfriend demanded the phone and proceeded to flip her freaking lid, called the phone girl some pretty spicy things, and said she wouldn't pay for the pizza. Story 18 we had a spreadsheet on the computer that showed the given names and phone numbers of anyone who has ever complained. We keep track of how often they complain, what it was about, and what they got. Free food, etc. We didn't do delivery, but we certainly did have a blacklist of people who are not allowed to ever get free food after they showed a pattern of complaining for free stuff. Story 19. I was the one ordering and had waited two hours and 30 minutes and decided to call and ask. 
This place I normally order through is roughly a 15 minute drive away, and they got mad at me for complaining too soon and decided to add me to the no delivery list. The delivery guy had apparently left the food on the neighbor's doorstep and never messaged me that order has arrived. You know, another positive thing to come out of the pandemic, at least in the US, was contactless delivery. So like when the food is placed on your doorstep and they take a picture of it to prove that it was actually delivered, I always like that you can see my dog in the window staring at the delivery dude with his big old puppy eyes. It makes me think that the driver specifically gets them in their shot, and I like to think that it makes them smile too. Story 20. As a current pizza delivery guy, no, but we should. Several places are in completely inaccessible areas. If your home is an apartment number on a third floor of a building with the same address as eight other buildings, with a code required to get into the gate to get into the building, and you didn't offer the code as instructions for the delivery, you should probably order pickup. Story 21. Not an official list from what I know, but we got a family-run pizza place near here that is known for making a big pizza. We liked them, and we got to them so often they'd learn my mom's voice and her order and know her name by heart. Until recently, seems most of the family members have moved on and new staff have been put in. Story 22. I haven't delivered pizza, but I knew the drivers. This is probably generic, but there was this family living in a hotel that would order pizza at the last hour and then complain that the order was wrong. The interesting thing is that even the kids would be cussing at the drivers. We knew their order was right, so they have been lying to get free food. Story 23. I placed the pizza on the delivery bag with a barrier box underneath it. It was during the COVID pandemic at its worst. No tip slammed the door at me. She later complained to the manager, who had to explain how no contact works. The lady started a Twitter war by threatening to kick my manager's butt, and she got banned as a result. Story 24. You know you spend too much when you get on the premium list at a pizza place have happened a few times to me where they would automatically know my order and such. Heck, <laughs> sometimes I get free sodas or pizzas. Reason stated, order got canceled en route, so here, you can have it, and stuff like that was amazing at times. Story 25. I have a reverse story. A few years ago, my grandmother ordered for a party some $200 worth of pizza and paid with a credit card. The next month, she loses her credit card and I have to come over and help cancel it and whatnot. Then I stay over to house sit her dogs for a while after that. Story 26. A friend worked at Domino's. When you order different toppings, they use a code letter for each and write them down as you say which toppings you want. Someone figured out if you said them in the right order, it could spell origami. They wouldn't realize until they wrote each letter down. (laughs) That was fun back in high school. Just for anyone confused about the origami, I substituted the original word for a more YouTube-friendly alternative. But just to be crystal clear on what was being talked about, just imagine that they ordered a pizza with olives, ricotta, garlic, anchovies, sausage, and mushrooms. (laughs) There, that should literally spell it out for you. Story 27. I had someone banned for sending dong pics to my female drivers. My boss had two people banned because the customer kept harassing my drivers. Not often we ban someone. I would say in the close to 15 years I worked in pizza, I can count on one hand people I've personally banned or my boss has. Story 28. I don't think we had a no delivery list, but I do remember taking an order over the phone, and when I entered his phone number in the computer, his profile had a warning on it that the guy was a con artist and not to give him any discounts or free food if he complains. Story 29. I had a client added to the no delivery list where I used to work as a pizza delivery guy. I was the only one still willing to deliver to the address because of how unpleasant and cheap the client was. Last time I went, I got a 10 cent tip for an over $200 order. Story 30. There's one chain that has a small family run pizza store that I ordered from once. They had a 30 minutes or it's free policy. So 45 minutes later, I went through the process to redeem said offer and rather than free, they credited me for my next order, which I wasn't upset about. Story 31. Like Pizza Hut and Domino's, for example. Pizza Hut being the one who initially learned of the no-delivery person to not be delivered to, and decided, 
Hey, these guys are our competitors in the pizza industry, but we are in this together in this aspect, so we'll warn them about this person kind of deal. Story 32. I believe in timing for tips, if they give you reason to. Like, I start tipping decently high, but if the same pizza place is going to take 35 minutes plus to deliver every time, when literally every other delivery place can make it in 15, there's a bit of an issue. Story 33. Well, fast forward, I swear to God, 20 years, I've moved to a new city, but was back in town visiting my parents and tried to order a pizza. Turns out I'm still on the no delivery list for that city since I've never changed my phone number. Story 34. A roommate from college lived in an apartment complex that was on the no delivery list. All the staff would say is that we don't deliver there. If you asked where they did deliver, they just say, not there. Story 35. Over here, at least, there's a rule that you can only call the pizza place or restaurant after waiting for two hours to complain. This place I ordered through normally takes 45 minutes from order to knock on the door. See, to me at least, 45 minutes seems appropriate for a pizza delivery. For one, I live further from the city, but um, also, if you want a fresh, actually tasty pizza, I would hope that they take the time to give it the attention that it deserves and not just rush you a heated up pile of cheese on bread. All these people talking about 15 minute deliveries have unrealistic expectations in my opinion. Story 36. Guy called to complain I had given the tip back saying, I think you need this more than I do. Boss told the client it wouldn't be an issue anymore as we'd no longer deliver to him. Story 37. I can just imagine some red rumming psychopath getting ready to end the life of the pizza guy, only to realize he is the only one willing to deliver pizza to this neighborhood and immediately stopping and letting him live. Story 38. Yeah, they really need to start using the Terry Pratchett of that Courier's Postman's poem from his novel Going Postal, which has a few exceptions tacked on the end, including any dogs with orange eyebrows. Story 39. I worked at a pizza place for almost two years. The owner had a long blacklist because he basically had a three strikes and you're done policy and hated choosing beggars. Story 40. I used to deliver sandwiches and we had two places in a no list. One was a super creep and another was a bunch of frat boys who didn't pay. Story 41. As someone who knows a drug rep, she usually orders a few days before. Cannot believe the woman wanted so many sandwiches in 15 minutes. If Shaggy and Scooby are anything to go by, then drugs and a tall stack of sandwiches go hand in hand together. Story 42. I worked at a place where part of the city the pizza place was in was listed as AD, after dark, we don't deliver to. Story 43. Imagine being safe from the dog outside to only hear, no, the really bad one is inside. I feel bad for that guy. Story 44. These days, the main problem is getting pizza delivered without some third-party service adding 50% or more to the bill. Story 45. We actually have a no-delivery list at FedEx, usually for threats or harassment. It's pretty rare, but it happens. Story 46. The mental image of a pizza restaurant manager chasing a dine-in ditcher for three blocks is hilarious. Story 47. In Germany, we have an ogre who lives in the back since he's on every delivery services blacklist. Story 48. Obviously, that relationship ended, but I got up on the no delivery list since it was my number. Story 49. My entire apartment complex is blacklisted. We used to tip pretty big for their trouble. Story 50. Chick called one of my employees a homophobic remark. We don't deliver there anymore. Story 51. I wonder if different pizza places share a no-delivery list. Story 52. As a former pizza driver, I enjoyed these. And I will end with one of my all-time favorite pizza delivery disasters. The first time my restaurant delivered pizza, I set out on the road with my co-worker, Eduardo, and I was really excited to see the look on the customer's face because we'd never delivered pizza before. He was going to be receiving the first ever pizza from our restaurant. However, Eduardo wasn't as thrilled as I was. In fact, he insisted that I drive, but I didn't technically have my driver's license, so I accidentally <laughs> I reversed the car many, many miles until it eventually ran out of gas. Not off to a great start, I'll admit, but 
You know, I was determined to deliver the pizza, so we set off on foot to ensure that the customer would receive their order despite our setbacks. So we were walking for hours and hours in this desolate landscape, and at one point, Eduardo even considered eating some of the pizza that was meant for the customer. Eduardo. <laughs> I know, right? But I fended him off, and uh, soon after, we encountered a tornado. After all our perils, though, I eventually spotted a wild horse grazing in the distance, and I shouted that we were finally saved. <laughs> Using my knowledge of the pioneers and how they navigated before technology, I hopped on the noble steed and giddied up all the way to the customer's house. <laughs> Boy, was I excited to see his face when he got his delivery. But would you believe that after all the trouble we endured, this customer was so rude to me because we had apparently forgotten his diet doctor kelp. He actually refused to pay for the meal and was berating me and yelling at me in my face. I was on the verge of tears. Seeing this, though, Eduardo came over and chucked the whole pizza right in the dude's face. He ate the whole thing in one bite. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.